All right, open Blender and delete everything. And we're gonna add in a cube. I'm gonna size it up a little bit. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Set it to six levels on the render and the viewport. And then change it to simple. We're gonna apply that. As you can see, there's this much topology. If your computer can't handle this much topology, don't set it to six, set it to five or to four. After we have that, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add a displace. Click new, then click over here and it'll open up the textures. If that doesn't do it, it's this bottom one right here on the menu. And over here, we're gonna change it to distorted noise. And then we're gonna change it to original Perlin. You can really mess around with any of these settings. It doesn't have to be exactly that. We're just gonna turn the amount down. So it kind of looks like that. We're just gonna mess with the settings until we get it looking kind of how we want. I like how that's looking right now. Go back over here. And we're just gonna mess with the mid-level until it's poking out of the cube, like that. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna add another displace. Same thing, click on new. Open up the texture menu. And over here, make sure you click on new texture so that you don't change the texture on the original one. It'll change it from texture one to texture two. Change it from distorted noise to cloud. We're just gonna mess around with this until we get kind of something looking kind of interesting like that. Go back over, mess with the mid-level again, and the strength until you get something you like. Then after you get both those on there, just add another subdivision surface and shade it smooth so you can see what it's looking like. Kind of like how that looks so far. Over here, we're gonna change this up to two. Just keep in mind, the better computer you have, the more subdivision, the more geometry, the less, the less you can do, obviously. Now that we have this, we're gonna add a camera. Actually, we're gonna click one to snap to the front first, so we're looking at it directly from the front. And we're gonna add a camera. Hit Shift Alt Zero, or is it Control Alt Zero? Control Alt Zero, and that'll snap camera to view. It's gonna click on camera. We're doing this in cycles. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna change the resolution on the Y. 1080 just so we have a nice sort of rectangle shape we go into rendered view it doesn't really look that good right now just gonna uncheck these two so we can see what it looks like then we're gonna go into camera and this is where we get the really cool goopy effect and change it from panoramic or from perspective to panoramic and we're gonna change it to the bottom that one fisheye lens polynormal I have a screenshot of some settings right here from when I did it before, so I'm just gonna copy those. There's no way I'm gonna figure this out again by myself. So, field of view 360. First one we're gonna set to zero. Second one we're gonna set to negative 2.7, not 20.7, 2.7. K2, we're gonna set to negative 0.256. We're going to set to 0.0165 and K4 we're going to set to 0. This might not look like anything yet. That's because we're going to go over here to the location of the camera. Make sure the location is set to the middle. And we get that and then we're just going to zoom in with the Y and you'll see when we get to a point how it starts to suck in like that. That's the fish eye affecting it give us a nice sort of thing. You can really set it however you want. I'm just gonna put it about there right now. We'll come back and change that once we get the material on. Now that we have that, I'm just gonna do some basic animations on this just so we can get the effect going. We're gonna go back to the first frame, select the cube, and then hit I, and set the location, rotation, scale keyframe. We're gonna go all the way to the end. I'm doing a 250 frame animation. You can do however long you want but go all the way to the end. Use the right arrow on your keyboard to go over one more, and then on the rotation of the cube, I'm gonna set the X to 360, the Y to negative 360, and the Z to 360. And I'm gonna right click insert keyframes, and if you play it, 
You see it's doing that. You can see the camera might be a little too close because it looks like it might be intersecting at some points. Let's just watch it through real quick. Oh, it cuts around it. See, it's looking very interesting right now. Another thing we're gonna do to make it look even cooler is we're gonna go back to the beginning. Gonna add a empty plane access. Hit one. And we're just gonna make sure this plane access is in the middle. Click back on the cube. And we're gonna apply another modifier. We're gonna add a simple deform. Change it to Z. Put the origin to the empty. Set it to zero. At the beginning, we're gonna apply this keyframe or insert this keyframe at zero. Go to where half is in yours. Mine's at 125, so I'm gonna go to 125. Z empty, remember, and then we're gonna set this to 360. And hit insert keyframe, and then go all the way to the end. Click over one again, and then set zero. Just so we can get the perfect loop. And now if you see when we're playing this, it's rotating in two ways, and if we switch the camera, it might be a little laggy right now because we're starting to get more motion and stuff going on, but you can see how if we just scroll through like this real quick. It looks very interesting. This is just with the clay sort of plain coloring. We're gonna go in now in the next step, and we're gonna do shading. All right, now we're gonna do the sh shading part. Go up here into the shading tab, switch over to viewport shading so we can see everything. Make sure these are both checked so we're actually seeing what it looks like. We're gonna make the world solid black. We're using the plugin Blender Kit. I'll provide the plug uh, the link in the description below for the plugin and the specific material I'm using. We're gonna go up here in the Blender Kit, select material, and we're just gonna search glow to find it. Once you search it, it'll be the second one. We're gonna click on it and it'll add it. We're just gonna click on this eyeball again to hide it. Go down here, we're gonna add a color ramp. And we're gonna plug this color straight into the glow color. We're gonna change it from RGB to HSL and to FAR. When you do this, if you make things the same color on both ends, it'll provide a whole rainbow. So we're just gonna start with a uh, green on each end real quick. Then we're gonna add a layer weight. That way it'll provide a little bit of differentiating colors. Doesn't really look like that much right now, but we're gonna take the top one, the first fur snail. I'm I don't know how to say that word, but it's the top one and you're plugging it into the factor. And then we're gonna use Node Wrangler, hit Control T and that'll pop both of these on. We're just gonna scooch them over. We're gonna delete the image part and just have a texture coordinate into a mapping. Plug this into the normal. And we're gonna have UV into the vector. And then down here, we're just gonna add a Bornoi texture. And we're gonna plug the distance into the scale. We're just gonna turn it down to like 3.3 or something like that. And over here on the color ramp, we're just gonna mess around with it a little bit more. I have a uh, picture pulled up on the side how I got it to look really good. So I'm just gonna copy that one. On the top, we're gonna make it red. We're gonna add another one in the middle. And that one is bluish. And then the bottom one, actually, I actually think the bottom one is bluish and the middle one is greenish. And then we're just gonna move this around until we get something kind of good. It's really red. That's because this top one is red. You can make it whatever color you want specifically. Maybe even white would be kind of cool, but I'm gonna do red. And just mess around with this a little bit until I get it looking more how I want. Just mess around with this scale down here to get it looking however you want. You can see that messes with the colored part. I'm kind of liking how this looks. We switch over, make sure now that we're back, we had this on, so up here, turn the shading back to how it should be. And we're just gonna scroll back in this just to get different views of how it'll look at different points. 
I really like this, but I'm gonna go back to the shading and actually add one more thing that we forgot. After with the glass part, I'm gonna add a mix shader. And we're just gonna mix in a plain glass one. Just so it's a little bit darker. Yeah, I'm actually going to mess with this too a little bit. I'm just going to turn the roughness down. And just uh, turn this emission up a little bit to like four. And I think that looks pretty nice. Might want to mess with this red, make it kind of blue. Looks pretty nice. Blue, purple. I kind of like how that looks. We switch back to layout. Just get an idea what it looks like at a couple locations. I like that. And for this, you don't have to do exactly this layout. You can do whatever you want with the shader. This is just one shader that I like how it looks. And once we have it how we look, how we want it, we're going to go over into the render settings. PNG, there. Cool, and then we're going to have the output. I already made a new folder on my desktop, so what you're going to want to do is make a folder somewhere. I just made it on my desktop and called it Fisheye RGB Warp. We're gonna save it there. Once we have that selected, we're gonna go to the render settings and we're gonna lock the time limit at 60 seconds. Just this will make it render way faster. It won't be in crazy high quality, but then you can use an upscaler. But instead of having like 15 minute render frames, you'll only have a one minute render frame. This is still going to take 250 minutes to do it, which is like four hours. So I suggest doing this when you're sleeping or when you're not gonna be home, so you're not wasting your computer time. Once you have that good, just click render, render animation. We'll start on frame one. You can see up here it's counting down on a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll just let this render out. I'm gonna render out the whole entire thing and then I will be back to you with compiling it and putting it together at the end. Now that it is rendered, we're gonna open up Blender again and then in the upper left hand corner, we're gonna click on this little drop down menu, change it from 3D viewport to video sequencer. Then up here, we're gonna go add image sequence Go to where you saved it, select all of them by clicking on one, hitting A, and hit add. Down here, make sure your resolution is set correctly. And make sure you go over here, choose the output, select where you want it to be. I'm just gonna put it back in here and call it tutorial render, hit accept. File format, change it to FFmpeg, open up the encoding, and change it to MPEG4. Output quality, I like to do per perceptually lossless. There we go, perceptually lossless. Now that we have all that saved, you have to make sure that you have your uh, render region and your crop to render region turned off too, otherwise it won't work. And then you're gonna go up here, click render, render animation, and it'll take all the images that it just spent four hours, however long many hours rendering, and compile it into a video for you. And that is how you do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something, make sure to subscribe because I got lots more tutorials coming up soon. Uh, share this video like it comment if you have questions uh let me know if there's anything in particular you want to learn uh hope you guys have a good one